In this video, I'm going to be putting together a book cover that, unlike the other book cover tutorial that we have, <clears throat> this one is built entirely on shapes, colors, and a little bit of texture. So there's not any photo editing, photo compositing with this one quite so much. It is simply uh, using basic elements uh, to create a different kind of, of image. So I'm going to go ahead and set this to a <clears throat> 6 by 9 inch. For some reason, my throat has decided to congest just prior to doing this. So this is 6 by 9 inches at 300 pixels per inch, which is basically what you're going to have for your average book cover. Obviously, book covers come in different sizes, but for the sake of this exercise, we're going to be using a 6 by 9 inch, which is really basic. Uh, it would also have a bleed attached to it, so it could be trimmed down, and it would also probably be designed with the spine and the back cover as well. But in this case, again, just to keep it simple, I'm going to focus on the cover. So uh, what I'm going to build here is just like a basic cityscape at the bottom, a color in the background, and some airplanes or something. This is uh, the same title. Uh, it's a, obviously a fake title for like a, a bad crime novel, <laughs> more or less. But I just want to demonstrate how this can be done with shapes. Uh, so I'm going to start just by throwing in a solid color in the background, uh, something with some intense color to it maybe a little bit more towards rust red like that <clears throat> and then I'm going to use the shape tools to build uh, the cityscape at the bottom that's going to be the uh, the first thing that I do and this is fairly simple I'm just going to take my rectangle tool I'm going to make sure that it is filled with white uh, with no stroke around the edge I want to make sure that's set to none and then I'm just going to build out like a basic uh, city skyline it's obviously not going to be realistic just something simple that I can work with and there we go like that now what you can see has happened as a result of that is it has put all of these rectangles uh, within the layers palette and what I'm going to take is I'm going to, I'm going to select all of those uh, by holding shift clicking the bottom and then holding shift and clicking the top and then I'm going to merge these together by control clicking and merge shapes so this gives me the bottom here as a skyline so I'm going to rename that to skyline and what I'm going to do to give that a little bit more depth like maybe I'll drop it down some and then I will use command J to duplicate it so now I have two of them I'll drop the opacity of that one down a little bit and then edit transform flip horizontal. What that does is it gives me the ability to kind of create this feeling of depth in this fake city that I've created. Kind of mimicking what you see back there. And I'll drop that even further. I could have done a better job with it. Uh, it's not the best balanced thing that I've ever seen. But it's going to do the job for me, so I'm not going to complain. Maybe I'll even take it and just kind of stretch it so that it feels a little bit different. There we go. That's a little better. That's a little better. See, I'm starting, I'm starting to obsess over it, which I don't need to do. Again, this is just a tutorial. So anyway, it gives me a little bit of a feeling of depth, though, having these two. I'll make sure it's below it. So this is skyline below. <coughs> And this is skyline above, those two layers there. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to build a couple of airplanes. Really, I'm going to build one. And what I'll do for this, I'm going to create a fresh layer up here on top, just because the shape tool will sometimes try to combine shapes if you build <clears throat> directly on one another. And it's going to give, I chose a, from my shape tool, the rounded rectangle tool. And it comes with a radius. And what that radius refers to is, you know, how curved are the corners? How big are they? Uh, right now, what I'm wanting is kind of a <clears throat> rounded end in order to make sure this looks like an airplane body. And right now, it's not doing it yet. So I'm going to increase that radius up to about 25 and see if that does it. And yes, I got a much better result from that. So you can see that this starts to look like the body of a plane, which is what my goal is for this. Now I'm going to take that and create a new layer above it, and this is going to be plane wings. 
and the tail. And I'm going to grab my polygonal lasso tool. This will not be a shape like the others. This will be actual just pixels filled in. I'm going to drag out the shape of half. of airplane wings and tail. It doesn't really have to be perfect there. And then I'm going to fill that in with white simply by painting on that new layer that I created called wings and tail. Let me actually grab a brush that's for filling in. I feel like in this case I actually made the tail a bit longer than it needs to be, so I'm just going to shift that up a little bit. Again, not going to get it perfect, but now that I've done that, I can duplicate that layer, that wings and tail, edit, transform, flip horizontal, and there we go. Now I've got the basic shape of a uh, plane here. You could definitely afford to, got a little pixel showing there, there we go. It could afford to be better. I should spend more time on it, but right now I'm not going to. There we go, lengthening that out helped a little bit. Okay, so here's a basic airplane. I'm going to take all these layers that I used to create the plane, I'm going to merge them together, and then I'm going to rename that to plane. And I'm going to shrink it down just a little bit just a bit. Maybe put it up here and then duplicate it. I'll make one a little bit smaller as though it's in the distance and maybe drop the opacity a little bit as well to make it feel like it's receding just like the skyline back here. So that one's a little bit further back. That gives me a feeling of depth even with these flat elements. Now I'm gonna take the rectangle tool and create a new layer in order to work on this again making sure it doesn't accidentally put it on one of my other layers which the shape tool is inclined to do sometimes I'm just going to create a long white line that comes up from the ground here <clears throat> I really cannot seem to breathe and the same thing for this one in the back I'll try to nudge it with the arrows to line it up. Now what I'll do is I'll take both of those. I'm going to merge them and call them air streaks, I guess. Maybe that's what I should call it. And I'm also going to rasterize it because I intend to erase part of it. Now if I take my brush, the eraser, and take a large soft brush, I can make these airstreaks kind of fade off into the distance like this as though they're dissipating as they disappear. So if I zoom in close you can see all I did was erase part of the softly erased part of the line but that gives it the feeling that it tapers and fades off which is what we want here. Uh, also my airstreak over here you notice because I dropped the opacity of the plane in the background it's not as intense in color as you get right here so I'm going to take an eraser at 30 percent opacity oh that's a brush sorry an eraser at 30 percent opacity I'm kinda off my game today and just erase that out a little bit make it lighter that way it also feels like it's receding into the background now we got to give this uh, the type that goes into it. So I'm going to go in here and grab just a basic type. I believe I have something usable on here. Yeah, I have BBoss, which is a great one for this. And I'm going to arrange the type in kind of an interesting, at least attempted, interesting pattern. I like to do all of my type on separate layers because it gives me the ability to manipulate the shape individually which is where you get a lot of good typography from is adjusting individual size and shape of type. So for this second line here I'm going to increase the size of that word till it fits out the full width. This was my fake title for my theoretical crime novel. 
it sounds dreary, which is the whole point. Now I'll take that time, let's pull it right into the center then. And you can see that this is starting to come together, but I'm also going to be putting in some texture and some color effects uh, to kind of help this whole thing. So I'm going to go back here down to my background color fill, and I'm going to put a layer above it, and this is going to be my gradient. So I'll type that in, grab the gradient tool from the side, and I'm going to change my color to a really dark reddish brown. Make sure that I have selected the linear button at the top of the parameters. Of course, whenever you choose a tool, it shows the parameters at the top. And then I can throw in a little bit of a little bit more depth into this whole idea. So that gives me a bit more of a dynamic in the background. And I'm going to do the same thing again. This is going to be gradient 2. Except this time I'm going to come down from the top and I'm going to use a lighter color, something like a, a yellowish. See, that's a little too intense, but I'm going to drop the opacity so that it's a subtle effect. There you go. Now I'm starting to get a feeling of depth even more with this. I'm also going to take my different layers of type, and I'm going to change one of them to kind of an orange-yellow, something to match the look. match the feeling that you're getting from the color palette here. And I think I'm going to do the same thing with the larger word. Let's try that. In fact, I'm just going to use the eyedropper there. Uh, that actually doesn't do a whole lot for me. Let's try just changing of. There we go. I like that better. Uh, it's making it feel a little bit like these are the same word, but hopefully the scale uh, helps with that, still makes it easy to read. And let's move on to really the last thing that I'm going to cover here, uh, which is the texture placed in over the top. So I'm going to file and place embedded, and I'm going to locate the texture that I downloaded for this, which is a concrete texture. And I'm going to expand the size of it. This is definitely high enough resolution. It's an enormous texture. And we're just going to give it a few different treatments, see how it reacts with these layers. I'm going to try first multiply. And you can see how that darkens everything down. Now, you usually will never use a texture at full opacity. You'll be dropping it down. So keep that in mind. You know, we're going to drop it down so it's something more subtle. And in fact, right about there, right about 40% is great for this. Uh, I'm actually going to duplicate the texture though and have a highlight texture. It's going to lay over the top as well, but under a different blending mode. So if I take it and set it to like overlay, and I may also, just to keep everything dynamic and varied, flip it. And we'll try a couple other ones too, like color dodge. Well, that's really interesting. That's actually not bad at all. And again, I like to bring the opacity down to zero and just work it up a little. See what kind of effects I can get from it. So we're going to settle on something like that. One problem that I'm having, though, is focal point. I want the eye to be drawn to the title first, but the buildings, the skyline down at the bottom, is taking too much attention because it's solid white. So I could take that skyline and alter the color of it. In fact, we could, I've never tried this before, but we could try throwing in a little cooler colors, maybe not quite that intense, but in the area of like a reddish purple, where you might get a better effect. I'm just, I'm just kind of feeling around here, seeing what I can all right, I like the feeling of something like that. And let's do the same thing here with the one in the background. Make it a little bit darker so I still get that dynamic of depth, but now I have a clear hierarchy from this is the most important element, uh, the planes are smaller so they're not attracting as much attention, and then the skyline down at the bottom is less important. It's really just set dressing. So I think that works pretty well for it. Uh, this is 
of course a tutorial so it's not the most excellent design you're going to see but if I was to continue with it I would look at ways maybe diminishing the second plane a little bit more this smaller one dropping its opacity down a little bit more uh, possibly even changing its color uh, for example if I take a brush and I seize this yellowish color I'm using for the type and change the color now that gives me a, a slightly different feel from it I can do the same thing with the original plane which I should probably mention this as well whenever I'm painting on these individual layers to keep it where it only colors what already exists there I'm using this little lock up at the top that's a lock transparent pixels I mentioned this in videos from time to time but I thought I'd at least make mention of it again because I'm using it several times here and that allows me to paint just on what already exists. I actually kind of like the air streaks being white though, so I'm going to go back to that. And there you go. And I might consider uh, adding some adding some clouds up at the top, at least maybe like a cloud texture, which I actually have a brush for that, so I can I can kind of test it out. I believe this is it. Yeah, and just do something really light up at the top, something that doesn't attract too much attention to itself. I'll take my Wacom here and, and try this out. <clears throat> I'll literally just take white and, and see what kind of effect I can have here. Just for my... A larger perspective but you know put some blending modes on it or something you know just to add a little bit of a texture to it it might even look better you know down towards the bottom kind of coming up from the city that's actually not bad either so you know this is the basic elements of it really what we're looking at is is building the, the plane you know building these different elements and just thinking in a 2d platform you know creating graphics from a 2d platform combining it with gradients and color and you get something that is more unique than just using photos. So being able to mix between these two forms of design is important and being able to think in these two different forms because it opens up your options. You've immediately doubled your options, especially if you're in a struggle to find good photos or purchase good photos, which you often have to do when you're working in design.